So the first one. Social virtual reality. So some of the first VR experiences started appearing in the 60s. And by the 90s, social VR gaming was already available as a product from companies such as Virtuality. So if you haven't already seen my video on this topic, I'll do like a brief replay of the beginning uh, and the end portion uh, of the video because I want to show this to you so that we can discuss it. Here's why VR matters to parents. Now, I got something new. Uh, this is the Oculus Quest number two. Uh, this is the second Quest. And I've been interested in VR for a very long time. Uh, long before I ever had any kids, I was interested in VR. My first uh, VR experience was at the uh, in the early 1990s uh, at the Calgary Stampede, a virtuality group shooter uh, that could be played with four four students. Let me show you what I mean. So this is uh, what it would look like. Uh, I'm proud to say that I shot my way through to win my very first uh, death match. Uh, and I also looked at how VR can be used as an educational activity uh, with the first Oculus Rift. Now with that one, I could not play for long because uh, it would give me like headaches. So why Quest 2 as opposed to the first Quest? Well, as somebody who has worked in products, uh, my advice has always been never buy version one, always buy version two, because version two is what version one should have been at a much more reasonable price. Uh, but the second reason is actually a much, much more controversial reason. And I think this is interesting. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. Facebook writes on the box that it requires internet access and a Facebook account. This is the more controversial reason. And this to me is interesting because it's a device that only works in the social space. That is, you can't just choose to play virtual reality games standalone it's clear that the direction that they are taking this product is virtual social networking. So after some initial training, my first experience was in a virtual music concert app called Venues. I jumped into a lobby and was greeted by user XSAS, who showed me how to use the app. And from that point on, I knew that this would be a very different experience from my previous experiences with VR. My VR actions would be tied to my online identity in a permanent way. So may, some of you may have noticed that we use a, a woman riding a bike with a VR headset on as the backdrop for most of our thumbnails. There's an iconic image of Mark Zuckerberg walking among an audience, all wearing VR headsets. And this was a perfect analogy of tech being used as a blindfold that hides us from what is really going on in the world. AI parenting was started so that you can see these invisible, unconscious suggestions made by AI. And so that we don't always only use it for sedation, but for relation and ultimately creation. So if you're interested in the future of screen time and what this means for your family, then you'll want to be subscribed to this channel. Uh, we are going to be doing some experiments with Oculus Quest. I think it's very exciting. Uh, not only that, uh, I've got a setup where I can also instant green screen. So we'll be able to do some kind of live views and stuff like that. You want to see what that looks like? Good. Now I'm going to set up the guardian.
Welcome to Oculus. After this tutorial, you'll be ready to explore. First, let's get familiar with the Guardian system. Look around you. This grid wall is the Guardian system. This grid shows the boundaries of your play area. Don't move or reach beyond it. It's time to learn about your Oculus Touch controllers. Now, try pressing all of the glowing buttons with your thumbs. Try moving the thumbsticks around. The thumbsticks can also be pressed like buttons. Next, use your index fingers to squeeze the triggers on your controllers. Locate the grip buttons and squeeze them with your middle fingers. Now let's see what your virtual hands can do. To make a fist, squeeze the grip with your middle finger and hold it down. To point, keep squeezing the grip and just lift your index finger. Now use your index finger to push the button in front of you. To pick up an object, squeeze and hold the grip button with your middle finger. Release the grip button to drop it. Your virtual hands can do just about anything. Go ahead, play with some of these items. Looks like you're getting the hang of it. Here's a few more to try. Well, that's interesting. When you're ready to explore some new VR worlds, insert a cartridge into the console. <laughs> yeah, the graphics are so much better than I recall when I was playing Oculus the first time.
So I would. When you're ready to explore another virtual world, insert the cartridge into the console. in building educational apps for the first Oculus Rift headset. Uh, the first was that it's extremely hard to press things like buttons that are in a 3D space. Uh, for this reason, much of the buttons we press in Oculus Quest are done by projecting a laser from your finger to a flat surface uh, that is oriented towards you. Now, this interface breaks the immersive experience, so what can be done? Well, the result has been more Beat Saber-like interactions where you don't explicitly click on a button, uh, but rather you walk or you cross along the side of an object or you cut the object. So I think like Beat Saber um, interactions where you, you're, you're just crossing, but imagine your head is the one that is, and your eyes are producing that laser, so that straight laser. Uh, to me, eye gaze itself is fascinating. Um, it's a fascinating area of research because we can learn so much about your unconscious mind just from what you look at. Uh, I did a research project with Dr. Ian Hargreaves and Dr. Penny Pexman from the University of Calgary on what happens to our eyes when we gaze on 3D content on regular screens. Now, if you've ever seen 3D Facebook photos, you'll know how well they draw your attention and just move and they start moving. Just simply turning a regular 2D like photo into this 3D scene, it does a huge amount to draw our unconscious attention. And this is exactly why virtual reality is so important. It's a deep exploration into the world of unconscious attention, moving advertising to a whole new level, even if you are only seeing it on your phone. And so that's why VR today is a good sign of things to come in our own social media feeds. Even if you don't use VR or don't plan to use 
a virtual reality headset anytime soon. Did you hear about this week's release of Microsoft, the Microsoft Mesh app for HoloLens? If you did, what you think about it? Now, I was excited to hear about how it could be used to enable remote users of Microsoft HoloLens to connect with each other. But I was even more excited to hear about their integration with Altspace. Now, some of you might not know what this really looks like. Uh, so maybe I can describe from an Altspace user's perspective. Uh, fortunately, Microsoft did release a video uh, demonstration of the work. I can bring up my hand menu, bring up my annotations here, and my fingers turn into, at this time, essentially a pen through which I can annotate in a space. I can see here that uh, while I've been doing this, my colleagues here have annotated as well. Yeah, and speaking of annotations, I think there's a piece of this model we should look at. Can you come over here and take a look quickly? Sure. Great, I'm actually noticing that this space on the model here uh, may actually need a further look from our engineering team. It seems like there might be something out of date. So VR is still early. So many of the examples that they show today, you probably could essentially get the same result by taking a screenshot with your iPad and then just drawing over it. But I think the real interest comes when you can immerse yourself in an environment rather than just manipulate a 3D object that is in front of you. Uh, for example, yesterday, my kids were pretending to be astronauts by hanging out inside a 3D model of the International Space Station in VR. Uh, 